Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain in details on to a how to make a dry sand molds into a casting process. So just you can see some of the introductions about dry sand molds. So here that will be the general arrangement for making a dry sand molds. But basically the dry molding sands which will be differs from green sanding molds. Because in the sense of that, the containings with uh, binders like uh, clay, bentonite, sometimes it will be using as a molasses, etc., which harden when the mold is to be heated and dry. So basically, in case of for making a uh, dry sand molds, so the sand mixers it will be just you can use for making non-ferrous castings which will be consist of the floor sands around 40 percentage, new silica sands around 30 percentage, sometimes coal dust that will be around 20 percentage and as a binder bentonite it will be around 10 percentage. So basically what to do for making a dry sand molds. So just you can see the pattern which will be placed onto the flat surface and that will be enclosing by a dry. So this is our flat surface and this rectangle it will be considering as a pattern. So pattern that will be resting onto the flat surfaces and drag box which will be enclosing with the patterns. So after this what to do the parting sands which will be sprinkled onto that particularly patterns for generally avoiding the green sands which will be sticking onto the patterns. Then just you can see the drag box now which will be filled with a sand mixer and rammed manually till its top surface. So what happens? This mixer you can say sand which will be filled into the drag. So these patterns it will be arounded by a green sands. After this, this drag box now it will be inverted. So this top surface now it will be having a patterns. Just you can see after inverting these patterns it will be on to the top sides. Once again the parting sands is sprinkled over the mold surface of the drag box. After this just you can see it will be cop which will be placed onto the drag with the help of pins and making a sprue and risers into the required positions. So the cop box is placed onto the top of the drag box and sprue and risers pins are placed in suitable locations. The green sand mixers is rammed to the level of the cop box as shown into the figure. So this is our sprue, this is our riser. And this is the combination of cop and drag which will be separated by a parting line. And into the drag portions it will be our pattern. After this, just you can see the sprue and the risers are removed from the mold. So the cop box is lifted and placed aside and pattern into the drag box which will be withdrawing. So by withdrawing the pattern from the drag box, just you can see this is our required shape and from both the side it will be making a getting systems for inflow of a molten metal from a sprue and another side that will be getting systems that will be connected with the riser. So this is our space for a sprue and this one is space for a riser. So this free space it will be connected with the getting systems and this riser which will be also connected with the another side of the gets and this is our KVT. So the gets are cut by using the hand tools to provide the passage for the flow of the molten metals. After this the mold KVT is clean and finished. Sometimes coarse is being requ required and that will be placing into the mold KVT for making a hollow castings. So just you can see this is a sand core which is placed into the mold KVT and this one is our vertical core. So as per my requirements of the hollow castings it will be placing into the mold KVT. 
Then finally, cob that will be placing onto the drag, vent holes are made and mold is ready for the pouring. So this is our drag portion, this one is our cob portions and now that will be our combination of the cop and drag so it will be making a sand molds and from this side it will be our sprue this is our getting systems and this one around a core which will be our mold cavity and this one is our riser so by the pouring of the molten form of the metal from this side or can say from sprue and this molten form of the metal which will be hundredly filling the mold cavity and after that it will be also fill a riser. So that riser it will be ensuring that 100% filling of the mold cavity as well as riser that will be also providing uh, some additional materials that will be required into the solidification process. So the cop is now placed onto the drag box and both are aligned with the help of pins. Plant holes are made to allow the free escaping of the gases from the mold during the pouring. So now this mold which will be ready for the pouring. But in case of the dry sand moldings, so a dry sand mold is prepared into the same manner of the green sand molds that we already discussing that, but which will be making a different shade. It is backed at a 300 to 700 Fahrenheit for 8 to 48 hours depending upon the binders used and the amount of the sand surface to be dry. So now these green sands it will be converting into the dry sand molds. That's why it will be known to be a dry sand molds castings. So by these dry sand molds that will be having advantages like dry sand molds process high strength as compared to the green sand strength then they are more permeable as compared to the green sand molds. Castings produced from dry sand molds process clean and smooth surface finish as compared to uh, green sand molds. As compared to green sand moldings, dry sand molds turns out castings with less defects. Dry sand moldings imparts better overall dimensional accuracy to the molds and castings as compared to green sand moldings. Now discussing with some of the disadvantages of dry sand molds and that will be dry sand moldings involves more labor and consumes more time in completing the molds because it will be backed up to the 8 to 48 hours at higher temperatures so it requires more time. Mold backing is an extra work as compared to that requires into a green sand moldings. Dry sand molding is more expensive as compared to green sand moldings because there will be the backing is being required for making a dry condition. Then dry sand moldings involves chances of the hot tears occurring into the casting process. Because of the backing mold may be distorted sometimes if it will be not making a proper mixer for making a green sand conditions then dry sand molding involves a longer process cycle as compared to green sand moldings. Dry sand moldings gives a slower rate of the productions as compared to a green sand moldings. So I hope you understand this and if you like this then subscribe and share Modi Mechanical Engineering tutorials. Thank you so much and keep watching.